We have the beautiful Kat Lakoi, Aka, Vixenville, multi-talented international variety burlesque performer, live event host, specializing in fire eating, glass walking, aerial hoop, magic. And she has appeared in TV, Masters of Evolution, and her stage show, Vixenville Revealed, toured the US in 2019 and won multiple awards. Welcome. And the world of burlesque has helped Kat to walk around the world unapologetically owning both her successes and her shortcomings. And her passion is to help others to do the same. So in addition to performing for audience, Vixen teaches her craft both privately one-on-one -on -one, and in supportive group workshop environments in a format designed for bodies of all ages, abilities, shapes, and sizes to break free. We're here to break free from restrictive damaging labels and instead access their inner badass, their inner goddess. And they're in a vixen. Oh my god! Welcome, Kat. <laughs> do all the things. It's all good. Yes, welcome. Yeah, you. Like it's so good to be here. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do a quick intro of, of how I end up doing <laughs> what I do, and why I continue to teach it to other people, and how I've found it's benefited me. And then we're going to walk, work through a couple of things, uh, some of the mindsets, some of the um, di different, some, some little exercises that you can just throw into everyday life to add a bit more confidence, add a bit more um, unapologetically being yourself, which is yeah. my favorite thing. Um, oh, I just kicked a little box as I crossed my legs. <gasps> now you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm Kat, Kat Lakoe, um, but I do perform as Vixen DeVille. I started out in London um, and then I moved to LA, which is where I'm now in 2012. Normally before pandemic, I'd be performing all over the world. Um, but now the pandemic's hit, I'm performing online, I'm creating acts online, and I'm also teaching online, which has been amazing because I had I had uh, released some courses online before pandemic and everyone was like, what Zoom? And I'm like, you'll find out. <laughs> so now everyone knows what Zoom is. Um, so yes, I, um, when I was younger, I was doing all the, the dance classes, the six, seven year old, going to tap, going to ballet, that kind of stuff. And I hated it because I was terrible at it. And I was like the overweight one. I was the galumphy one. I couldn't remember any of the dance moves. I felt super like, um, just in, in, uh, an unvalid and, and not good enough and everybody else in the class I'm comparing myself to them and they're, they're all doing the high kicks and they know what they're doing and I'm just like oh, I never want to go back ever um which was really sad because moving your body and dance is such a beautiful it, it just uplifts you it's so therapeutic but because it was like this five six seven eight do, 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 must be like everyone else I just couldn't I couldn't let myself go I couldn't release myself so I got into acting and specifically physical theater where it's so much more experimental and you're sort of just feeling how your body moves in the space and you're sort of using your body to express a character. So like you put your shoulders back, you get more posture. I'm the queen. If you hunch your shoulders over, you kind of do little, you know, I'm the evil witch in the forest. Um, and it kind of really helps you to embrace these different characters by really being in touch with how your body moves. And a lot of our, how we sit and how we stand, how we walk, it comes from our life experiences and it comes a lot from habit. Like if I just sit at my desk all day, I'm gonna get tired, I'm gonna get worn out. I'm gonna start hunching down and sort of hunching over my desk. And if I don't sort of notice and go, oh, hang on, I was hunching. Like yeah. you don't notice because it gradually happens. Yeah. And I've seen, yeah, I've seen myself on stage be like, hello everybody, da, 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 da. And at the end of the evening, I'm kind of like, oh, like, you know, I'm just, I like, walk off stage hunched. So if we're not paying attention to these things, it's like how you can gradually put on weight if you're not weighing yourself regularly, or you're not, you know, if you're, if you're not wearing, so I, I wore a costume in a, in a, in a show once. And so this costume was fitted to me exactly. So I knew if I was putting on or losing weight, because yeah. it had this one piece of costume, but you don't notice these things and they change over time. So I love this experimental, movemental theater. I went to train as an actor. I did a lot of solo performance technique, which was entertaining an audience, engaging an audience. It wasn't necessarily um, how to be a stand-up comic or how to be a, be a solo performer, here I am, but being someone who speaks in front of other people, being a lawyer getting up in courtroom and having to give your speech, being a realtor and taking somebody around the house. Whenever you're being looked at by a group of people and you have to um, you know, take the space. So a lot of my training in burlesque comes from that and coming from that confidence of just being in front of other people and engaging their time. So 
I graduated, all that fun stuff. I then saw this breakdown for a burlesque show and I was like, this seems so exciting. Oh my God, I get to dress up in sexy clothing. I get to wear a corset, which is exciting because I'd seen them in like Rocky Horror and all this stuff. I was like, of course it's things exciting, taboo things. But it said clothing removal, it said stripping. And I was like, nope, not gonna do that. No way, nah, -uh, because I did not like how I looked. I was not happy with my the way my body looked. And I was like, why would anybody in an audience want to pay to see that too? Never going to happen. So I didn't do it for fear. So, <laughs> oh, but I was in a show where my friend what had then applied for this show. I was like, oh, what are you doing after when we finished doing the show? She's like, I'm doing this burlesque thing. It's so exciting and so amazing. And I was like, I need to see the show. So I went to see the show and I was like, mate, this is my jam. Oh my God. Every single woman in the show was their own, what my friend calls an avatar. Yeah. Like you could instantly tell who they were. It wasn't a chorus line of women all looking exactly the same, all dressed in the same thing. Each solo performer was their own, this is me, I'm amazing. I like to talk about it like it's the Spice Girls. Like you could tell, Scary Spice, yeah. Posh Spice, Baby Spice, you know, everyone was their own being. And I loved it because it was such a mix of height and shape and style and vibe. Everyone just loving themselves for who they were. So I got drunk and was like, I want to be in your show. Put me in your show, which I did. And being in this show allowed me to really express that true version of myself. So I call a lot of my training, unleashing your inner vixen, because we all have this character inside that we've shunned down over time because when you're a child you do your things and you express yourselves and people are like oh that's great yay woo hey oh you oh you just did a jumping jack well done like we get all this encouragement to do whatever it is we're doing and then as we get older people are like mm, who do you think you are mm -mm, squash it down mm -mm, no oh you should be doing your math homework you shouldn't be playing around with with your bike or whatever it is yeah. and we start having to shun ourselves and restrict ourselves and then you behave a certain way around your kids, around your grandparents when you're at work because you don't want to get fired and arrested for just being this yeah. version of yourself that you've hidden away. So I really talk about finding your burlesque character, not as like creating this character. I'm not creating this mask to hide behind. I'm peeling back these layers of oh, I'm only really quiet at big events because I've been told to shut up so many times or, oh, I only really behave that way because of this. And actually my true inner self is this version of me. Mm -hmm. And if you're worried about leaving, letting that out in your real world right now, the burlesque stage is a brilliant place to, as a playground to explore that, to get used to it. And the more I was this Vixen Deville character on stage, the more I was like, oh, this version of me is valid, is accepted, is celebrated, and I can now bring her into more of my normal everyday life. So this is why I love this burlesque teaching because so many burlesque teaching out there is about the choreography. It's like, these are the dance moves. And if you do this dance move, you will be sexy, you know? And it's like, no, 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 no. It's all the stuff underneath that gives you the confidence to then perform those dance moves in a really confident way. And that work is what I'm really interested in because as it filtered into my life, you can do this type of work for yourself so that you can enter places like you're entering the blessed stage. You walk out of your front door, you walk into your first dates, you walk into your job interviews, you walk into your Zoom meetings with this more, this here I am, like deal with me rather than is it okay if I come in? Am I wearing the right clothes? Am I doing the right thing? Am I accepted? Yes, you're accepted. You're amazing. Everyone else can deal with it. Wow. So Yes, ha, grr, <laughs> a little bit of a grr for an evening. So we're going to look at that owning who you are because a lot of coming to the blessed stage, boom, is going, here I am. That reveal that's involved in the strip isn't just going, here's my boobs, I'm naked. It's about going, oh, this is me and I'm amazing. Come on this journey of celebrating how amazing I am. So we're going to look at how to, how to own who you are with confidence. We're going to look at some characters because this person that we are right now, like the person that you maybe are dissatisfied or the person that you present at work, maybe isn't the person that you're, you're happy presenting. Mm -hmm. I've had students who are like at work, people think I'm this really uptight, like annoying, like, like bitchy kind of, but I'm really fun loving and no one sees me that way. It's because you're not allowing yourself to let that out in those environments. So looking at these characters, looking at discarding and claiming some labels. And then we're going to look at how you can throw this into your everyday life. So we're going to start with owning who you are. Boom. Own everything. Everybody take up space. Take up space. 
oh taking up the stuff <laughs> going hello everybody makes me feel um, amazing we do not take up space oh my gosh we learn to hunch over when we're young because we get tall before the other people in the school or or we get boobs early on so we hunch over you know to be told be like seen and not heard so we're all like taking ooh, or you know in london you're scrunched on the tube and you're like i don't want to take up any space take up all of your space be like boom here i am and that whole you know take up your height, take up your, all of this. I think I need to stretch. stretch my back. Yeah. <laughs> so when you go on the, when you come out on the blessed stage, the blessed stage, the show is not a competition. It's not America's Got Talent. It's not who's the best one. I don't go to see a show and go, oh, who did I like best? Who was the best one? Blah, 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 blah. I go, the show was amazing because it had all these components to it. Um, you don't want to go, oh, I had my my like holiday dinner and the best thing was that one potato. No, the whole dinner was amazing. The whole experience was amazing. You know, the, every single part of that, that course was amazing. So it's like the fruit salad and every performer is a different type of fruit. Mm-hmm. So you've got the apple and the cher- cherry and the banana and the pear and all these different types of fruits. And you can't go into that fruit salad, diving into it and jumping out on the blessed stage by looking at all the other fruits and going, they're all better than me. Oh my gosh, look at that curly yellow banana. I need to be curly and yellow to be accepted, you know? And, oh, there's, there's like a little small pear and I need to be like that to be accepted in this fruit salad. No, because the fruit salad already has those fruits in it. It doesn't need any more. It needs you. It needs you. Whatever the fruit is that you're bringing, the little red round cherry, <laughs> the I can't think of any more fruits. I've run out of them. But you need to bring you to that fruit salad because it already has everybody else. It's that whole thing about be you because everyone else is taken. So we want to jump into that fruit salad, into the first day, into the job interview with everything that makes us you. So in that little red round cherry, it's little, it's red, it's round. If it doesn't have all those three components, it's not a cherry. So if it doesn't like an element of that, it's still not going to be authentically itself. You have to bring everything that is you confidently into that room. The good, the bad, I call it the good, the bad, and the wobbly. The good, the bad, the wobbly. Bring it into the room. (laughs) We're going to do a little bit of mindset on that. Um, Take a deep breath. Take a deep on breath. Oh, I feel a little stretch. You need a little stretch. If you want to get up and stand up, you can. I'm going to have a little sit because it's a little city day. Let's roll our shoulders. Beautiful. If you want to close your eyes, you absolutely can. If you feel like you want to have them open so you can visualize things more with your eyes open, absolutely. you know you, there's no rules. You know how you work better. So I want you to start by thinking, we're going to look at two things. Think about something that you don't like about yourself. Something that you hate even about yourself. Something that you wish you could change. And that can be one of three elements. It can be something that you can see that's physical. You can see it in the mirror. It can be something behavioral that you do every day. You're scatterbrained, you're late for stuff. You keep spending all your money on Amazon and forgetting about it. And oh no, I need to change itself about about myself. It can be something that you once did that you still feel bad and guilty for. You killed a ladybug when you were five years old. You forgot to write to your friend before they left the country, whatever it is, something that you once did that you feel bad and guilty for. So something physical, something behavioral, or something you once did. Just one thing. Don't be greedy. Just pick one thing. And now I want you to think about when you realized that you had this quality. When did you realize that you looked this way? When did you realize that you behaved this way? Or when did you do that thing? When was it you did that thing? And I want to think about when somebody told you that this was negative. When did someone tell you this thing you're thinking about is negative? You should feel you should feel bad about it. And was there a difference in time? Was there a time when you lived with this quality, absolutely happy about it? And then someone gets a little beacon, and they're like, "Oh, it's bad." And you're like, "Oh, I should I should now feel guilty about thinking it was good." <laughs> They've lightened my eyes. Or was it the fact that this person mentioned it and said it was negative that made you go, "Oh, I didn't know I had this quality. Now I've got this terrible quality. I need to feel bad about." When was it that someone told you to feel bad about this quality? And who was this person 
Who was this person that told you? Was it a parent, a sibling, a coworker, a supposed friend? Are they still in your life right now? Do you see them every day? Do you see them once a year? Do you never see them at all? Who is this person that's telling you to feel bad about this quality? Because this thing that you're thinking about, it's not good or bad. It is just something that makes you different from the other people in the room. And if you wanna make it so, you can make it your unique selling point. It's just something that's different. And because it's different, it stands out. And because it stands out, it's going to get mentioned. It's going to be talked about. It's going to be picked on. But it just so happens that that one person who came along and said it decided it was negative. And that comes from their own fears, their own standards, their own issues, their own bullshit that you do not need to carry around with yourself. We have enough bullshit to carry ourselves. We don't need other people's. So we are going to sever that tie. We're going to get rid of that person's opinion because we don't need that. We don't need that. And I want you to try and decide why it's amazing that you have this quality. Why is it so fantastic that you have this quality? Why is it amazing that you look this way? Why is it amazing that you behave this way? Or why is it amazing that that thing, that you did that thing? Can you make that decision for yourself? And this might be something that you, you struggle with. This might be something that's easy, easy and it just comes to you right now, but it's the really good muscle to work on every single day. If something comes up and you're like, oh, I don't like that myself. Why is it amazing? So I have scars on my shoulder from a surgery I had. Um, people might say, oh, go on, when you go on stage, cover those up. They don't look good. They look ugly. They make you look rough <laughs> or whatever it is. Those scars show that I've decided, I've decided that I'm a warrior. I'm a survivor. I've been through some stuff. I've got a story to tell. And so you can um, retract whenever someone goes, oh, you've got scars on your shoulder. I can, rather than going, oh my God, yes, I need to cover them up. I can go, yeah, I've got scars on my shoulder. Let me tell you a really fun story. And that brings a connection. So we can talk about this later in the session. If you're like, mm -mm, I'm struggling with how things are positive, we can talk about that. Um, but for now, think about that. Let that marinate for a bit. I want you to think about something that you love about yourself. Oh my God, there is something that you love about yourself. It can be something physical. It's how beautiful your earlobes are, whatever it is, something you can see in the mirror that you love about yourself. It can be something that you, um, that you do every day. You're kind to small children or you give to money to charity, whatever it is. There's something you do every day that you love about yourself. There can be something that you did that you achieved, however big or small. You had a kid, you renovated a house, you saved $5 last week, whatever it is, something you love about yourself. <laughs> and whenever I mention this one in classes, people go, oh no, I don't want to do this one. Because we don't like telling people that we love things about ourselves. We are told to be, we're told that we're arrogant. We're told to be modest. We're told to go sit in the corner and it's not all about you. And don't, ooh, why, why are you bringing it all about you? <gasps> we are told to never celebrate the things we love. And that is just as damaging as being told that there's things that we need to get rid of. So <laughs> when have you ever had to hide this thing you love? When have you ever had to modify or change or hide a part of your body to fit in with someone else, to please someone else? When have you ever had to uh, change or censor your behavior around other people because it's not socially appropriate? When have you ever had to uh, quash down or even deny these beautiful achievements you've had because the other people in the room don't have the same value on them? When have you had to hide this thing that you love so much about yourself? And again, around which people? Because if they're still in your life, well, hoo, 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 we need to start culling some people out of our lives. Are they friends, coworkers, siblings, uh, people at work, okay, coworkers, people at work? Are they bosses? Who are these people who are making you feel bad about the thing you love? Because the more that we try and change ourselves to fit in with that group of people who, let's face it, will never be pleased, the more we are living as this false version of ourselves to please other people. Instead, if we shout from the rooftops, I have this thing I love about myself, then you're going to attract like a lighthouse the people who love that in you too. And you can live as that full happy version of yourself, whatever it is, the thing that you do. <laughs> if you collect stamps and no one thinks it's cool, tell everyone you collect stamps and you'll find the other stamp collectors. Yeah, stamp collectors for the rise. So we want to shout out the things we love about ourselves. So I want you in your mind to take in one hand that thing that you've learned to hate about yourself 
And the other hand, that thing that you love, 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 love about yourself, and you're going to squish them into a little bowl, squishy, squish, squishy, mush. And that little bowl in your hands, oh my God, you've squished them together so much. You don't know which is the bad bit and which is the good bit, because you know what? That combination, it's all you, boo. It's all you. There it is that little combination. Nobody else has that combination. Nobody else will have that combination. That little combination is the true version of you. And that you're going to throw it in the room right now. Bloop, throw it in the room. It's going to fly be free. Oh my God. It's out there now. It's out there. I can see it. Everyone else can see it. The things you love, the things you hate, ah, they're out in the world now, but that is what you're going to celebrate. That combination of you as you walk into rooms, walk into zoom meetings, walk into your first dates, owning those both of those things celebrating you so i'm going to talk about that a little bit um now that we're all back in the room um some people do find that difficult they're like well there's nothing positive about this element there's nothing how am i supposed to own these things calling out the things that you're sort of uh self-conscious about or not sure about or um you, you know you've got them going on once you call things out to other people uh, it levels a playing field. So if I've gone into a job interview and I'm like, oh my God, I'm running really late. I've got coffee stains down my front of my, my thing. My hair's like a mush. Well, oh my gosh, whatever. I'm not going to go in that job interview and be like, hi, hi, how are you? Mm, and just hide it and quash it down. I'm going to go, hi, oh my gosh, look at the coffee on my top. Oh my God, I was in such a rush this morning. Oh, that'll teach me not to stay up late in, late in the evening. And even if they're like, well, this bitch has just not got a shit together. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be working for a company that won't give me a little bit of leeway for just getting coffee spilled on me. Mm -hmm. If I tr pretend to be, mm -mm, I'm not, I'm not a polished person. I'm always late for stuff. I'm always late. And rather than going to a room and be like, hi guys, I'm sorry. I'm late. I'm like, hi. Yeah, I'm late again. Uh, you know, oh, well, that's just how I am. Because if people don't like it, you, you, you're going to, yeah. I know I'm always late for stuff, right? I just know I am unless it really, really matters. And I will make an absolute, absolute um, effort to do, to do so. But I've got a friend who's always late for stuff as well. We always turn up at the same time because we always say, let's meet at seven. And we both get there at 7.15. Like it just happens. It's just, but I love it in him. He loves it in me. It's just, we just, we just deal with it. So finding those people. Um, I talk about, I have these nubbins on my hair. You can't really see them right now, but I do aerial hoop. Yeah. Um, they're like little hard skins that normally people would want to chop off, right? But for me, being a non-athletic person growing up, I got into aerial hoop like late late twenties. And I love them because every time you work harder on it, you get a little, another little nubbin. It's like, you know, like belts in karate. <laughs> I've got like four nubbins now. <laughs> um, and I went on the first date and this guy's like, oh, what's, What's this on your hand? And I'm like, oh, it's my nubbins because I do aerial hoop and I'm super proud of them. He goes, oh, we'll have to get rid of those, won't we? And I'm like, well, no, we won't. We'll we'll be getting rid of you. Actually, that's what we'll be doing. Because if I wasn't, full, if I couldn't own all my stuff, I could go into that meeting going, oh, my first date going, oh my gosh, hard skin on your hands. That's why I'm single. Oh no, now I'm going to mutilate myself and prevent myself from even doing aerial hoops so that I can find a man. Because <gasps> then I went on a fir the first date the next week and the dude's like, what's this? And I'm like, it's my nubbins. And he's like, oh, I love it. It means you're strong. And like, I love it too, because I've got them from doing weightlifting. And, and we bonded on that. And that's the whole thing. It's celebrating the things you love. So you find other people who love you for that too. And the things that you think are not good, owning them and finding a reason why they're great. When I first went on stage, I wouldn't go down to pasties because I was like, my boobs are tiny. There's no point. People are going to be like, what was the point? What was that? Get, get her off. Put the next one on. Um, and I had to be like, well, tiny to who? To who, who by whose standards are these tiny? Um, I don't want to go out on stage and present them for the audience. I'm going out on stage and revealing myself for my own celebration. And if I can't celebrate everything I am, because it's the idea of pleasing yourself. I'm going out on stage to please myself, celebrate myself, not to go to the audience. Am I good enough for you? <gasps> no, none of that. I'm going to go out on stage and go, look, look how tiny these boobs, these are the tiniest ones you've ever seen in your life. You're welcome. Yeah, they're so tiny. I don't have any back problems. Yep. Yay for me. Boom. And if you can talk about your shortcomings or your flaws in that way, yeah, I've got a big fat ass. You know what? If I sat on you, you'd die. Ha, that's how powerful my big fat ass is. Like just owning these things in the stupidest way you possibly can. 
So if there's any, I mean, I would love to, if there's a chat, if you want to chat, like if there's a thing you're struggling, like finding a positive about, I'm happy to workshop that out. Um, but if that's kind of resonating, you're like, yeah, I got it. I got it. I know how my flaws are, how, why my flaws are good. Um, but feel free to throw in the chat or even like if you want I don't want I don't ask people to share too much because I don't want people to be like I have to share but if you do want to go I had a revelation I love the thing this is why my thing is lovely please put that please put it in the chat. I, I actually um I used to be very conscious of my face because mm -hmm. when I put on a little bit weight it would go fat I, I right probably round face and so I have my hair like kind of cupping the front of my face just to cover it up you know smile too much because like you know just go yes I had this I was like if I smile I get fat cheeks what's that about we're not allowed to smile anymore because I might look like I'm fat what the hell is this about like on my graduation picture I'd just been on holiday like the week before so I'd been eating a bunch and lying around a bunch and uh I was like I can't smile too much because my cheeks are oh my Good God. No, look at how fat my cheek, look at how fat my face is. Look how much I've just been lying around and eating whatever I want. My life is amazing. I love my little fat cheeks. Shows how affluent I am. Remember in the days when like, you know, they'd have the paintings of the wonderful voluptuous women. Oh yes. Richness and wealth. In, and in Chinese as well, the Chinese, uh, the old uh, beauties were all round and voluptuous. And yeah. 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 Oh. Look, look at, and that's also the thing like you never know how other people are feeling like I've had people come in my class and I've looked at people and gone oh let's trade bodies right now you're the perfect shape you know like I've, I've gone oh and they walk in like I don't feel good and for whatever reason so I had one girl come in because I, I make people go Look, look at like look at parts of my body look at my head look at my shoulder like I invite people to 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 start inviting people to look at them like to purposely say, look at everything I got going on. I had one girl going, hey, look at my arms. Oh, look how skinny they are. Oh my God, look at my bony arms. And I don't, I, I think she had struggled with anorexia and some other things, but like she, you know, she was like, oh, look at me. I look like a cancer victim. I look undernourished. And she was saying all these mean things about herself. Um, whereas you just don't know. And like someone you look at who think, oh, well, they're, they're larger than me. They could have easily just lost like, 30 20 pounds and been like I look amazing so it's all relative like it's like it's like the thing about the bo small boobs small to who and why are they why did they have the right to tell me that they're yeah. small big enough whatever enough you stop and comparing and you just accept and just yeah just look at what we have and just accept it that's you know yeah. you can't do anything about it but just celebrate it how amazing I am look yeah. at it look at it um <laughs> And it's also that thing about um, who are you doing it for? Because I'm not saying, like I've got some students, they've had like boob jobs and stuff. Like, absolutely. If you want to enhance something or change something, color your hair or put makeup on, whatever it is, do it, but do it for you. Like when I started burlesque, everybody had these beautiful fingernails, like they're all painted and beautiful. And um. And then uh, I wasn't wearing eye fake eyelashes. They all had beautiful eyelashes. And I look at them and go, oh my God, that's so beautiful. I really want, I really want to wear fake eyelashes. So I started putting the fake eyelashes on and they felt so amazing. I just loved it. But I wasn't doing it to fit in. I was doing it because I loved it. Now, my fingernails are terrible. I have the worst fingernails ever. Oh my God. Um, but because I do aerial and because I'm manual and I do things, I did they get in the way. I love how they feel, but they're just, I chew them off at the end. So I don't want to go on stage being like, oh, my nails look terrible and I need to wear them. Like, I'm not going to have my nails like this all week and then on my show go, must put my fake nails on so I'm acceptable in the burlesque world. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but if I wanted to, absolutely, because it, it makes you feel good and you want to do that. So I'm not, I'm not against, you yeah. know, changing yourself, but only do it for you. Like, yeah. don't lose weight because your friend is doing it or because your, your husband wants you to do it. You do it because it makes you feel good. Otherwise, it'll, you'll, you'll never even achieve it. Yeah. And I think that's um, the most amazing thing to, to just to really do it because you want to do it. It feels good for you um, and not be afraid. Because I remember growing up as a teenager, you was gay, like, you know, all the other girls with like all polished, they started putting makeup on and stuff like that. And you feel like, oh my God, I, like you don't belong in that group, you know, it's yeah. kind of scary. Yeah. 
but mm -hmm. and and that's the thing explore and try out which is what we're moving into now is the character exploration so again the reason i love burlesque is because it's such a place of play which we don't do as kids anymore and creating your burlesque act is a whole exercise in going, right, let's start from square one. What do I love? What music do I love? What costume do I love? What character do I want to be? What experiences have I never had before? So your whole piece that you're putting together is just an exploration in how to please yourself and find what fires you up. Some people don't know anymore. Like they, you know, you, you, you fall into hobbies because your friends did them or you, you know, you get your routines because of whatever your life choices are. And unless you have this moment of pause of like, wait, do I watch horror films because I like them or because my ex-boyfriend used to like them? Like, do I, do, like even burlesque, I was like, do I just do burlesque because it was like, it's something I fell into. I came to LA giving up burlesque. I was like, nope, I'm going to do TV and film. That's it. Getting rid of burlesque. Don't like, don't need it in my life. And I missed it so much. And now my whole, I have a whole studio full of costume and props. Cause it's just, it brings me so much joy, but having those moments of questioning, like the things I do, the clothes I wear, the music I listen to, the people I hang out with, the job I have, did, do I still want to do like past me chose them? But does me right now still, do I still find joy in these things? So we're well, gonna look at the character. Yeah, I'll just That's pause and let that, that sink in. <laughs> so the character work we do, because we do, we are just walking around as like, this is me, this is the person I've sort of became, become. Um, like I, I even uh, hurt my ankle once and I was working, walking with a bit of a limp. Oh no, that was, so I was walking with a limp and I was at a bus stop and I was like, oh my God, it's cold. Cause in London bus stops are cold. And I remember going, oh my God, I'm cold. Oh my God, I'm cold. And uh, I went down to set the bus stop one day and my friend was there and there was silence. It's like, you fill the silence. I went, oh, it's cold, isn't it? And I was like, oh, it's not cold. Hang on. If I just put my shoulders back and stop hunching over, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> and it's just because it was habit to like, it's cold, it's a bus stop. Um, so we fall into these habits of like the way that we walk, the way that we move, the clothes that we have. And I want to look at these two ends of the spectrum of the burlesque characters, femme fatale and cutesy cheesecake. So you kind of explore these characters and you'll find something in between that is you. But I like to say that you can approach these char this character work either as claiming the thing that you've never been or you can claim something for yourself. So you've got your, you've got your femme fatale. Your femme fatale is alpha female, powerful, the queen of everything, owns everything, is very intentional and purposeful. If you are revealing something on stage, if I'm showing, oh, I'm gonna show you my shoulder. Here is my shoulder, you may gaze upon my shoulder. You are allowed to gaze upon my shoulder. And now, oh, you'll never see my shoulder again because I own your very soul, mwahaha. She's like the Maleficent, the Snow Queen, all these powerful characters. On the other end of the spectrum, there's the cutesy cheesecake character. So everything's by accident. Like, oops, you just saw my shoulders. Oh, well, they're out now. Hoo -hoo, my clothes just fell off. Didn't mean for that to happen. Oh, the wind just blew and lifted my skirt up. Hoo -hoo, you saw my bum. Oops. Uh, but she just goes along with whatever is thrown at her. She has no consequences, no responsibility, just floats through life, breaking wedding china and you know, scratching your car and spilling her drink. And oops, didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, no one cares because everyone loves me. Um, and it's such a freeing character to have because if you are full of uh, responsibility and you've always had to be correct for people or meet up to people's standards, playing this other character is really releasing and therapeutic. So both of them are. So the cutesy cheesecake, say you've been, um, say you're like a, the youngest child or you've always been put down your whole time and you know, oh, you don't really have a proper job and you're couch surfing and you're a bit of a failure. And if people have put you down and said you're this cutesy ditzy, don't have any responsibility, you can use this to go like, no, that's not all I am. I'm more than that. I am this powerful femme fatale character. And again, maybe people haven't seen that in you because you only behave like that at home or behave that way with a certain group of people but you can go on stage and say, no, this is me in all my power. And who, anyone who's ever told me that or put me down, fuck them. Like I'm, <laughs> there's, there's a swearing coming out, fuck them. Uh, Cause I am this powerful boom, person. But if people have equally told you that, like, you, you know, you're the oldest child, you have all this responsibility, look after your brother and sister, be home by nine, all that stuff. You can go, no, I'm not 
I'm not going to be uptight and uh, responsible the whole time. I want time to just mess up and goof off and not have any responsibility at all. And so that's when you approach that character and live in that character. You can also own a label. So because it's just as tiring to say, I know I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that, when you actually are. So if you are a bit of a klutz and a failure and like, you know, ditzy and whatever, and people have gone, you're all these labels, you might have spent your whole life going, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, trying to show how in control you are and how responsible you are. If that's not authentically you, then that's tiring. So you can go, yep, yes, I am. I am a klutz, I am ditzy, I, I am late for everything doesn't matter. That's who I am. And it's lovable. And if you don't love it, well done, dunsies, you know, done that. So you can then go on stage and be like, here's me in all my glory of being the klutzy ditzy person. And there is no responsibility because it's not your real life. It's the burlesque stage, but you get used to being that authentic you. And then you can live more like that off stage. So in order to do this, this is something you can do at home after, after the session. If you can find some music, that really speaks that character to you. I like to use Spanish flea for the cutesy ditzy one, you know, um, or if you, and if you, or if you find some powerful music for the femme fatale, just walk around the space as that music is playing or walk around the space with no music playing, just to know how you walk. How uh, are you taking big steps, small steps? Are you, is your shoulders back? Are the shoulders forwards? Like, how does your body move? And don't try to change it because that's absolutely great. That is you, that's your neutral body. But for you to know where you can go, you need to know where your starting point is. So walk around the space, feel out how your body works, then put on one of those pieces of music and allow yourself to just whatever comes to you. Maybe you're going to strut around. Maybe you're going to do some little shimmies. However your body wants to move in that space, be in a private space. So no one's going to be starting judging you. Um, and just walk around and explore what it's like to be that character. Because you might have denied that character to live inside you for so long. You didn't even know it was, it was in you, you know? Like I didn't want to be cutesy for the longest time because I wanted to be taken seriously. I was like 21 in a corporate world going, please take me seriously. I know what I'm doing. I'm an adult. And I would never allow myself to be goofy and stupid because it was just like, I didn't want to be seen that way. But the more I allow that into, like I'm all of that right now. Like Vixen Deville started with Femme Fatale, but now she's just, she likes having fun and just goofing off, so. Well, that's what I want to ask you. Like you play all sorts of different characters, right? You just let it out. Yeah. When I first started, I wanted to be Femme Fatale because my, my older brother had put me down a lot. I was bullied at school a lot. I was, I was told like, oh, you think you're so posh. You speak, you speak, because I had this sort of more posh accent for the, the area I lived in. Um, oh, you, you think so highly of yourself. I was a geek at school. So it was like, oh, you got an A grade on your test again. Me, 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 me. So I would quash down any power. I would, I would hunch over and go, I don't, you know, because I was tall as well. I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm okay. And oh, I'll hide the A grade that I had because I don't want to, I don't want to like shout that out and celebrate it. And I would, I would never want to be thought of as arrogant or, or confident because it was just like, I didn't, you know, I want to please everyone else. So I wanted to go on stage and be like, boom, screw everybody else. I will set fire to you all and like bow down to me, you know? <laughs> like I really wanted that kind of revenge feeling and that allowance to be fully powerful and be in my body and take my full height. Um, so yeah, I, that's exactly where I went. I went, I went femme fatale all, all across the board. Um, but year by year it's changed because I had all this responsibility and then I got to a point where I was just like, I, what I was doing, I was doing acting. So everyone was like, you need to look this way when you go into your room and you need to make sure you look polished. And I got really sick of that. So all my acts became like sort of dirty, angry. Like I was a werewolf covered in blood and I was a vampire killing someone and ugly acts, I call them, you know, cause I didn't want to be the pretty burlesque performer. I was like, nah, like rebelling against that. And then I got to a point where I was like, oh, I want to be expensive. I'm just going to walk in a gown in diamonds down some stairs and feel my, feel my expensiveness. And this last year has just been, I needed fun in my life. My good God, did we need fun in our lives this last year? So all of my acts were like, I'm going to get dressed up in an elephant onesie and jump around in the abandoned zoo. And that's my, that's what my I, act. What about that is that, you know, we, we are like going through life. A lot of us is just staying in this dual type and not 
like, you know, moving away from it, not having that freedom because we think that that's how people see us in the world and we want to keep that image same. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, the more that people tell us who we are, if we're not confident in who we are, other people are going to tell us who we are because we're like, I don't know, am I confident? Am I, am I cutesy? Am I ditzy? I don't know. And people will say, oh yeah, that's the one who comes to work and she's such a dit. And oh, that's the one who comes to work and she's always quiet and she's insular. And you, you just don't know. You don't know who, like you need to tell people, oh, I'm, I'm the fun one. Like I'm the, I'm this one. And, and own if you're a bit snarky to people. I was, I've been watching Big Bang Theory <laughs> like this whole, like a couple of months. And the way Sheldon talks to everybody, he's such a bitch, you know, like, <laughs> People love him. He's their best friend because they just they expect him to be that way and they love him for it. If he was in Big Bang Theory going, oh, I can't say that, it'll offend everybody. But he's so confidently this geeky, like nerdy, sees everything black and white, but he doesn't apologize for it. That's just, it's just how he is. It's all good. I mean, I don't know if you've seen Red Dwarf. That's such a random reference, but again, I've been watching a bunch of that. It's this British sci-fi uh, TV show. And Lister is this little slob. He eats curry in the morning and he goes through the garbage looking for stuff. And But he's just like, yeah, I'm a slob. That's my thing. That's what I do. And he's, he's lovable. We love these characters for just being themselves and having the guts, the courage to just be like, this is me. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So to finish off, how can you bring this into your normal life? You, I mean, other than just doing your burlesque training. So I really encourage taking your time and taking your space because we rush around this place for other people. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm rushing to work because they said I have to be there at six. So I'm rushing to do this thing because I've got to do this thing for my kid, whatever it is. Like, just take the time. Next time you go to the grocery store, give yourself like an hour to whatever time you normally take, give yourself double the time drive there really calmly get out of your car really calmly enjoy how it feels to get out of your car and just shut that car walk up the stairs rather than take the escalator you know walk up the stairs and feel what it's like to sort of strut up the stairs walk glide down the, the um the the not the corridors what are they called the aisleways you know and just take your time and Feel if you're hunching over, feel if you're hiding from things and engage with the other people. You can engage with your cash register person. I don't know what they're called. The person on the cash register, yeah. you know, fully chat with them. Be like, hi, welcoming. This is, you know, this is my thing. I, I would sometimes go in the grocery store and be like, oh my God, they're going to judge me because I haven't got any vegetables. They're going to judge me because I've just bought this chocolate cake. Oh my God. But be, you can be like, oh yeah. Yeah, I came in here just for chocolate cake. I'm amazing. I came in here for chocolate cake and vodka. I'm having a great night ahead of me. Like you can joke about that stuff rather than going, they're going to judge me. So owning your stuff and uh, owning, owning your things that you love and the things that you don't love. I think start with the thing you love. If there's something in the exercise you did where you're like, I love, um, I don't know. I love my, I love my cleavage. I love my ears. I love the fact that I, got a degree in law even though now oh, you're a lawyer <laughs> i was saying that because it's so different but no one expects that i have a studied law because i'm a performer but like something that you've done that's kind of a little bit not like i do have an entire collection of crickets in my you know whatever it is that you've got that people don't think start mentioning it in your in your zoom chats when people say how are you tell them how you are oh my god i've just put my kid to bed or oh my god i've just been reading this book on whatever share what's bringing you joy because the more i tried to hide stuff i went to this uh interview and i was like i can't tell my did burlesque because they'll think less of me and in the bathroom there was this woman going oh what, what did you do last night and i was like i did a burlesque show but i can't say that what lie can I come up with? And I paused too long. So I just had to go, oh, I, I, would do, I did this thing called burlesque. And she was like, oh, I do it too. And we connected like that. And it's so good. So yes, in your next Zoom meeting, bring attention to a part of you you love, to a behavior that you love, to an achievement that you love. Start bringing more attention to that. And start bringing attention to the things you don't like. Like you're saying about your face. Maybe the next Zoom meeting you have, you're going to put your hair up and be like, here is my face for all its glory like just just test the waters a little bit feel like you know if you don't like your legs start wearing some shorts or a little short skirt or just just try it out feel what it feels like do do the do the trying out thing and then your wardrobe and what you wear like start trying out I mean I know we're in pandemic but 
Um, I say, just go to Goodwill and try things on. Like, even if it looks weird and it would never suit you and it's just not your style, just try it on for fun. Be funsies. Let's play like it's Halloween all year round. And let's start exploring because you might go, oh, I never would have thought of putting this top on. And actually kind of feels, oh, oh, thigh high boots. I would never ever wear thigh high boots, but they kind of feel kind of cool. So all that, all that fun stuff. So there's some ways that you can take that into your everyday life. Um, if burlesque training doesn't interest you, I am doing an offer today for Melody. It's the full course that takes you through the entire thing. So you start off with the mindset, you start scrambling away at all this material, you start peeling back the layers, what's bubbling in there, what have you never dealt with, what have you dealt with, but you want to express it and celebrate it. All that fun stuff. We look at your music, your costume, your character. What do you want to express on that stage? Um, you, you know, it can be as personal as you want. It can be as, as funsies as you want. And I take you through the steps of putting this act together. And at the end, you can um, film it you can, or you can perform live in a, in a virtual show. So either I have my curtain up here and I'll just perform live. Da, 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 here I am. Or I'll film it and I'll help you edit it. So it's like a little music video for you to have of this is me in my element. And I always say it's like, if you go to a sculpting class and you make this little sculpture, at the end, you've made the sculpture, you've got your therapy out of it. You don't have to show it to anybody. You can just take it home, put it on your mantelpiece or you can throw it in the garbage. But it's the doing of it that is the fun thing. So if you're like, I don't wanna perform, I'm not gonna push you under a stage. But I do think that the performing part of it is just that like proof to yourself that that you're like, like I'm enough. Like this was- this well, was It's a great piece to have like those two um seems like a beautiful um how do you say it? Like your own beautiful piece that distills like the best in you yeah you know and you can actually go back and think oh my god this is how amazing i am and yeah it's like doing a photo shoot and going wow this was me in my height of glory i look amazing and i love putting things into your act that is is bringing attention i always have moments of bringing attention to something you love and bringing attention to something you hate just to have that experience of you know, when you show someone something that you don't like, they actually kind of applaud you and you get a lot of really good response for it. And some people use it as therapy. So like I had one person, she did this like empress act where she was casting this spell and it was kind of like the spell and like all these people who'd berated her her whole life. Um, I do one where I have this little hat box and it's been sent to me from a finishing school. And it's all the reasons why I can't go to the school because I'm my waist is too big my boobs are too small my nails are a mess and in the box are all the things to fix it you know and it goes you know if you do all these things maybe we'll accept you and so I have to put gloves on to cover my nails and I put a corset on to suck at my suck in my stomach and I stick balloons in my bra to make sure I've got my boobs big and I put gaff tape on my face because I swear all the time and then the whole act is me going well screw this and I rip everything off I da 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 and I'm just me my pasties and my, my my thong and I'm like yep this is, this, is, this is who I am. And if you don't like this, well, then you're done. So your act can be a full expression of you. The story of your act can be um, you taking your ownership or working on a story that you're working through. Um, my friend was going through a divorce and she had this blow up doll in her act that she stabbed a bunch. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> she, oh. Oh my God, the, one girl had like a, a, a pinata of, of her boyfriend and it was about, I like candy. And uh, she'd been dealing with like sugar issues her whole life. So it was like, it was something about the sugar. And then she started just beating the, beating the hell out of this, this pinata that was her boyfriend. And it was amazing. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it was I guess, you know, um, I think it's good to do, like, especially when you go, like, you know, you get older and you think, oh my God, where, who was I, you know? Yeah. And yeah. you have this, this, like, memory of this moment. Yeah. And it's just yeah. beautiful. You have to show your grandchildren. So, hey, or you you know, you show. I have uh, like, you know, five. Like, I had a student <laughs> perform at my last show, and her grandchildren were at the show. Like, she's oh, loving it. And she's been a caregiver her whole life. She's been like looking after other people, making sure other people are okay, looking after her parents, looking after her four children. She's She used to work in a school. And she's like, now it's time for me. Now I want to do me time. And she performed for her first time, I think a year ago. And now she's she's all over the place. She's like got three or four acts this, this year that she's done online. And she's like, it's just given me a whole new lease of life. And she's 65, it's great. Like four children, however many grandchildren she's got. Um, and it just like her face is just like the whole time because she's just having so much fun. Um, 
Yeah, I love it. I'll just do a quick screen share of the um, offer that you have. Yeah. Um, and so this is the private training program with cats. And so at the moment it's 997, but if, um, if you put discount code in, it's Melody, right? I'll put it in the email. It's 50% discount, so it's half price if you use the code Melody. Yes. So use the code Melody, it's half price. It says what's that for? Um, okay. I think it's 499, 499? Yeah, 499, 497. One of those. <laughs> I can't do math. I'm too pretty to do math. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me owning my bad math skills. Look at that. 498.5, yeah. So, and this is in USDs. And so you've got the interactive 75 page workbook and that's a step-by-step -step interactive guide for exploring um expressing yourself i so i love that no the whole course. so it's a 10 it's a 10 week course and that you can do it in 10 weeks mm -hmm. but that guide is basically your book that you're so you're reading each chapter as you go along so you can take three months, you could take a year, you could you could skim through it and do it in five weeks. Some people like to really let the work marinate. Some people like to just, I need to do this before I turn 40 or whatever it is. Um, so that guide keeps you kind of on track. And then you have your uh, instructional videos and PDFs. So there's a lot of work to do with, before you actually work with me in person. So that's all the, that kind of goes through that owning the things you want, the, uh, bringing attention to yourself, being seen, your exploration with props and costume. And if you scroll down the character development MP3s, that goes through all the things I was talking about with the, the cutesy and the, and the femme fatale. So that has pieces of music that relate to those characters. Um, and then you can explore through those characters with those MP3s, how many times that you want to do that. And then if you keep going, so that's the art of tease. That's more uh, for technique. So that's your glove removal and your stocking removal. And it's about you connecting with the audience. You're not just taking off a glove, boom. You're taking off a glove, you're checking with the audience. You're connecting with the audience. You're connecting with your glove. You're having a conversation with your glove. You're having an attitude to what you're doing, the reasons behind it. Are you revengefully removing it? Are you playfully removing it? Um, so that kind of goes through all that. That's more burlesque technique in that. Then you get your private consultation. So I'll talk with you about what your goals are. Are you wanting to really get into this? Is this something you want to do for yourself? Are you wanting to have a 60 year old birthday party and perform for your friends on Zoom? Are you wanting to just perform for your partner at home? Like what's your kind of goals with this so I can work with you a bit more tailored? Um, we have a Facebook group. So everybody in that group has gone through this training. If I'm not answering a question that you need answered, just throw it in there and they will get into it and tell you. The Funk Buster group, call, a group Zoom call is like this. I'll just come on. I'll give you some advice for what I've picked up that month or something I've been struggling with, how I've got through it. And then everyone brings like, well, I've had an issue with this or I don't know where to get false eyelashes from or, you know, I uh, hate my ankles. Uh, how do we deal with that? So whatever people are dealing with, we work through that. Um, you get your emails reminding you every week what's going on, where you should be at. And then I look at your feedback from your rehearsal footage. So if you are in a different time zone and we can't connect, you can film what you've been doing. I will watch it, make notes, and I'll film myself giving you the feedback. And then I'll send you that video so that you've got that and you can go through the, the feedback with the video. And then you get your four private sessions with me online. So that is looking at what you're loving, the music you love, the costume you love. I look at how you're re resonating with the material and I'll say, well, I think that you really got this revenge thing going on or you know what, you're so fun and cute. So I wanna bring more of that out. And so I'll work with you about what you're bringing to the stage and what seems to sit well on you. And then we'll cre create this act together um, throughout until it's, it's finished. Um, Oh, hello, Sheldon. He's just uh, just joined. And then, yeah, at the end, you put that all together and you perform. If if we're open, you perform in a show. If we're not open, you perform in the virtual show. And like I said, that can be you live. That can be um, you pre-record it if you want. I've been filming multiple locations. Like I've, I've been going crazy with it because I found it so much fun. But if you just want to shoot one angle and I edit for you um, and then you've got your, your video to go. Um, and then guide and finding future performance. So if you're like, this was the best thing ever, I need this in my life because I get to vent on stage. So don't go crazy during my day job. Then yeah, absolutely. I'll help you figure out how you can perform more in other shows, how you can connect with the community more and all that fun stuff. And then the, yeah, the edit of your, 
the edit of your, I'll help you edit your piece together. Oh, I forgot the bra embellishment course was in there. Yeah, so that's a little um, addition I put on. Some people love to create their own costume because it's a, a further um, expression of themselves. And so this is a three, a three week course. It's all pre-recorded videos on how, like the functionality of your costume, how you can like, you know, thrift it. You don't have to buy all these expensive things. You can use different parts of how to, how to make your costume look a bit more you and how to express yourself more through your costume. So that's what that's about. Wow. I think that should be the end. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh it's like, <laughs> keep on scrolling. So it's half price at the moment. If you put in the melody, um, uh, in the melody mode. Melody. Yes. And then the link is just Vixen Deville slash Melody, I believe. Yeah, I can put that in the chat. In the as well. If anybody wants to look at that, um, uh, that is awesome. Hi, Sheldon. How are you going? Anybody have got questions? That's the link there. Oh, you did the link anyway. <laughs> An urgent meeting. No need to apologize. It's all good. So again, <laughs> I, I think what it do right at is like you know if you're actually thinking of reinventing yourself, and so, it's like you know, it's great when you're thinking of like reinventing yourself, and you're just like you, know, you want that space to mm -hmm. kind of like try try this new outfit, it's like a new skin on. And you want to yeah, I remember being at um, not English college, so it's like kind of late high school. It's not college that you have here, but whatever. Like you're 17, 18. And this guy would just turn up every day and you didn't know what he was. He, he turned up in like a, like a sweatpants and whatever. And the next day he turned up with all his eyeliner, like really gothy. And the next day he turned up with all his like spiky hair and everyone was like, Oh my God, what's he doing? Oh, he doesn't even know who he is. And I was like, he's just trying it out. Like, and so we don't want to, if you've been showing up at work sort of a bit slouchy and your hair is just, air dried and you haven't really tried any makeup on and you're wanting to exp experiment with well maybe I want to curl my hair maybe I want to wear a bit more makeup maybe I want to wear show a bit more cleavage maybe I want to try this out you can't just go all in for it and come up to work because everyone's gonna be like who's this what's going on and then you're never going to do it again you'll get so much negative response or like oh what's going on and if you're not comfortable in it like I will if I go if I go to work and I turn up totally not work, looking like I normally do I'll be like yeah I'm trying this thing screw you guys don't care what you think um but you know this is an exercise for you to gain that so um doing it in the burlesque world or doing it in class with me gets you to explore and experiment with all these different things so you can figure out oh yeah I kind of do like the gothy look or I kind of do want to be a bit more whatever it is um, my friend had this massive big necklace that she loved and she was coming to a show and she's like I didn't want to wear it at the show because I didn't want to like distract from the performers I was like it's beautiful screw the performers they got their stage time you can come as an audience member looking amazing and so she filmed herself like walking down the street as like a accountability hi guys I'm wearing my massive necklace I'm just going to Ralph's I don't care like <laughs> and it was just great to see her wearing it it was great you know yeah. I mean, how many people are brave enough to to do that, you know? And I think that's the most beautiful thing about the list. It's like, you know, everybody's just going in there and they're just, it's just performing for themselves. Yeah. And like giving themselves the permission, they give the audience permission, they go back home and they're just like, oh my God, like I wouldn't have imagined doing that. Like I, I want to get to do that. Yeah. That is, that is and me. that's the thing. Like Sheldon's like, I have no idea what my look is. Yeah. Just it's the trying it out and the, it's the, it's the getting out of your own rut mm. and, and trying it out. Like, I mean, I remember kind of when I was 16, I had 10 black t-shirts and 10 black leggings because I didn't want the hassle of trying to see what looked good. I just didn't know anymore. I was like, I don't care. Just black leggings, black t-shirt every freaking day. That's all I wore. And I didn't know how to, how to look at things. And I went to the store with my friend and she's like, what about this? And I was like, oh no. And I went, actually maybe maybe I should try it so if you don't ever have the opportunity to just try try things and explore and you know if if you were um if I was living with three sisters and a mother I'd be trying all the makeup colors and all the different things and all the sparkly things but if I don't with, live with those people I don't get to try it so it's 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 first being in that community of people who are all on this experimentation road so they can all share their toys um and and having that ability to sort of try it out and see if it feels good um Sheldon we've been talking a lot about pleasing yourself and knowing if it feels good for yourself because you know I would try things on 
maybe if a partner said to me, oh, you should try the thingy and I try it and I'm like, oh, this feels awkward, whatever, but it makes him happy. Um, you know? So yeah, try things on and be like, I don't like that. I do like that. Don't like that. I do like that. And it's just, it's a, it's a um, try and oh, what's try, just try and the feeling just to, just to whatever feels good yeah. one, right? T test it. Test it. Test it. Experiment. And that's what's great about burlesque is that it's not just oh, rhinestones, feather fans, feather, feather boa. It's not just that's what burlesque is. It's it's everything. Like I said, I have a I I mean God, it's behind this curtain. I have like a pig onesie where I cook myself and chop my skin off. Like that's the reveal. Um, the man in black. <laughs> oh, because you just wear black all the time as well. Do you have the same problem? Yeah. yeah, I think I got it from the is it the fly where he says if you just wear the same thing every day, it takes up less of your brain space or something. I guess I pick it up from there. But yeah, burlesque can be, you know. Uh, dominatrixy it can be cutesy it can be pinup it can be showgirl it can be you know one of my friends dressed up as a dreidel for hanukkah <laughs> like you can be wearing whatever you want um and you decide what the strip is all of my i mean i i did my fire act just as freddy krueger in a full-on freddy krueger mask was that sexy i don't know it confused a lot of people um but <laughs> you know that's your space it's your space to experiment which yeah. is which is something that we don't get to do right in in you know outside and i think we're just living just to please others or just to stay safe yeah and this is a great way to actually just to experiment and to risk it yeah. and at the same time that transfers to other parts of our, our work as well as yeah. we we give ourselves more permission because you take these massive like i said it's a playground it's a training ground you take these yeah. massive risks in burlesque and then like i buy this massive big amazing costume and then on the weekend, I'd be like, maybe I'll borrow some of Vixen's clothes for when I go out tonight. You know, like maybe I'll put her <laughs> shoes on. And now, like, like, I don't know what's hers and what's mine anymore because I do kind of wear some of her stuff. Um, it's, it's all me. But yeah, like I, I mean, the, the pig idea I had, I was like, I said to my, my friend, I was like, I've got this really crazy idea. I think it might offend a lot of people and I don't think it's possible, but wouldn't it be hilarious if, oh, and so I just said it like a... But I put it out in the world, like I said it out there, you know? And then um, I saw something happen on stage. Someone used a prop and I was like, oh, if that's possible, then the pig act is possible. So I started looking online for pig outs, uh, pig outfits. And I was like, I need to find one that's pretty. I need a pretty pig, because some of those pigs are ugly. I was like, I need to find a pretty pig. Um, and so I just, and I just had it in my, in my closet for like six months. I was like, what am I gonna do with this pig onesie? Like, and I just kept thinking I can't do this act people are gonna go nuts like people are gonna think I'm a mental person but it was the most fun it's received so much compliments it went to the Beehoff Festival which is like the oh Academy Awards of burlesque it got accepted into Beehoff and it's just because I was pleasing myself I just kept giggling every oh time God. I thought about it you know? I, that's what I love about it because you're you're giving yourself that permission to play and you know yeah. it's exactly what your book is it's just giving mm -hmm being creative and I love that you'll it's like a such a fun fun career you know fun career to have yeah. just to create and have fun and just to enjoy and just like you know and just thinking like you know what's next what's next yeah yeah <laughs> wow so anybody else have any questions thank you so much Kat for your time and um yeah so we've got that 50% off of the course we've um, with Kat, the vixenville.com melody, if you put in my name, you get 50% off and then I'll send in the email as well, just remind everybody. And yeah, so this is like, if you are, you really want to, you know, just try out something new to really express yourself, spice up your life and, you know, start getting really intentional about life, about really being the person that you want to be. I love how you're talking about being intentional, just, you know, even just, thinking of how you, where you walk, you want to just play you know, at that time. And I think that's amazing. I think we, we are so all much into, you know, the autopilot, like, just go here, go there. We're not really thinking about yeah. how we want to, you know, feel at every moment. So, yeah. So anybody else, uh, if any questions, just let us know, you know, Kat's still here. Yeah, Sheldon says, am I going to be hosting again? You have, you recorded it. So I think he'll be getting the replay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And then if, if you're not bored of my voice, then you, <laughs> you can check out my website and there's a bunch of videos of me like in interviews and 
Um, I just did a podcast. If you check my Instagram, it's at Vixen Deville. I'll put that in. Um, and I just did a podcast with, um, oh. it's called Clowning Around. It's a UK podcast. And so I've just been interviewed for that. So if there is, if, if you're like, I just want to hear Vixen's voice a little bit more. Uh, there, there's a lot of my voice out there. Thank you. It's a mixture of English and American and weirdness. I don't know what my accent is anymore. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? It's my accent. There you go. <laughs> Ownership. <laughs> international. It's, it's international. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Transatlantic. That's it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think that's Australian, but Mel- Melodies is Australian. Mine's just. Lord, it was Australian. Oh, okay. No, mine's Australian. So, but you came to Melbourne and um, did the show. And there was somebody in my list that that said that they met you in Melbourne. They did a course with you in Melbourne. Yes, I did the Australian Burlesque Festival in Melbourne. No, I did it in uh, Canberra and Sydney. But my friend, who I'd I'd met years ago, I had never seen her. I visited her in Melbourne and stayed with her. So I did a couple of classes. I was like, well, while I'm staying with you, because I can never not work. Um, I was like, well, while I'm staying with you, let me put on a class. So she said, oh, there's a there's a dance studio nearby. She sort of put it together for me. And I taught like a, yeah, I took a, a, a sort of a day intensive for about like 30 people, I think were in that, were in that group. They were beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much for your time. Yay. So lovely to see you and... Thank you. 